I'm looking today at uh, another OBD2. Oh, get my teeth working today. OBD2 uh, scanner, code reader, and onboard monitor test. Uh, it's been sent to me by the nice people at C Reader. Uh, it's one of four in this range that they do. Uh, this is the second one, the 5001. There are, if we can just see there, there's a 4001 up to, uh, there's 4001, 5001, 6001, 6011. The 6011 one is the one that is uh, going to do everything including ABS and SRS. And this one here is the 5001. So it's OBD2, it's CAN compatibility, IM readiness freeze frame, it, data streams and data graphing, it will give you your vehicle information, it will O2 sensor test, you've got onboard monitoring systems test, uh, you've got manage, manufacturer specific diagnostic trouble codes, built in lookup for the trouble codes, data record and no it hasn't got data record and reply, I do tell a lie, multilingual support and internet updatable. So. Let us get this thing out of captivity and we will have a look. So this is the unit itself. It is plastic construction. It's a launch professional diagnostic tool. So that is a uh, Launch Tech is a different brand, so that's interesting. It's not got any branding on the outside. Oh, it has got Launch. It's on the back there. Okay, Launch C Reader. So there we go. So uh, you've got a nice. Uh, it's a bit cold in here in the workshop today. Uh, you've got a nice size display. You've got rubberized buttons. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. But all the buttons have got a nice positive. Um, click the plastic is um, textured sort of in the same way as your sort of car dashboard is um, uh, yeah so there we go um, you've got on the bottom here is uh, the port for downloading uh, the data off the unit and for updating it you do get the USB cable to be able to do that uh, you've got the standard OBD2 socket and there is a cover as well uh, for the socket to stop getting the pins damaged in storage. So um, it's a bigger unit than a lot of ones that you'll see. If we just take a look at one I previously reviewed, if I can find it, here we go. So, uh, by comparison, that was the Autofix OM126 uh, that I reviewed, but I mean, just on the screen size alone there, uh, the screen is a, is a lot bigger uh, compared to that one. Um, I get the impression with this one, it's probably uh, a bit better well made. Uh, I do like the fact that you've got a positive click on the buttons. This one doesn't have that, although the buttons are... Uh, rubbery. So we'll just put that back. Right, so without further ado, let's get out to the car and uh, have a look at it in uh, action. Okay, so we're in the car, so let's plug the unit in and see what we get when it comes up. So we've got a splash screen come up. Now I know with my car, which is the MR2, the ignition does need to be on, so uh, for it to be able to communicate with the OBD2 uh, system, so I'm just going to turn the ignition on now. Let's just turn those off. Blowers in the background. Okay, so when you turn the unit on, you've got three options, which is diagnose, settings, and help. So uh, let's go to uh, settings. And um, one thing I do like about this unit is the button press on here is very positive. And what I mean by that is, when you press the button, uh, you can feel the click and if you hear uh, there's no mistake in the fact that you press the button which I do like that myself so let's go into settings 
So you've got three settings, there's a language unit of measure and beep, and language is self-explanatory. If we go, if you press down and then OK, and every time you press OK that's like enter if you like. Um, these are your navigation buttons. Uh, OK is to enter into that option and then the back key there is to come back out of it. So if we go into unit of measure, you've got metric and imperial. Well, I'm in the UK and we use metric, so I shall leave that as it is. And then beeper. Every time you press the button, you've got the beeper sound. And that enables you, if you press the OK button, that toggles between turning it on and turning it off. And for this video, I'm going to leave that off because we don't want to keep hearing that every time I press the button. And we can hear the click anyway. So, uh, if we go across and have a look at help, and let's go into about OBD2. Okay, so that's interesting. So, um, I've not seen this on a scan tool before. It talks about what OBD2 is. And if we press the right key with the arrow there, So that's really, I think, helpful for people who don't know or want a better understanding of what that is. It actually tells you a bit about what onboard diagnostic is and when it comes in. And let's go into about the modes. And there are different modes. You've got mode one, I can't remember how many. I think it might be up to nine modes. Um, if you're watching this and you know how many modes there are, please leave a comment for us. I can't remember off the top of my head. So, oh, here we go. So you've got mode one, mode two, about displays, mode three, powertrain, mode four, used to clear diagnostic trouble codes and freeze frame data, mode five, oxygen sensor. So, yeah, so uh, that's really interesting. I've never seen that before. And then we've got uh, vehicle coverage here. And then it talks about what cars it covers. Now, um... If you're in North America, OBD2 was brought in in around 1996. In Europe, I think, was around 2001, 2002, something like that, was when it was formally uh, phased in. Okay, so that's going back out, press. Okay, and then we've got about data stream. So uh, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but basically it talks about it's got a little uh, knowledge base, if you like, for each uh, part of using the system, which I think is quite interesting uh, in itself. And then you've got Diagnostic Trouble Code Lookup. And that's where, when you pull the codes, you can enter the codes in, and it will give you a, um, uh, give you a code. Let's just... Uh, let's put in a just a random number. Oh, I can't think of one of the last codes I had was one. Oh yeah, okay. So um, you then got to input your manufacturer and things. So, but you've got an onboard. Uh, built into the unit an actual lookup which is very useful um, me personally what I tend to do is I'll get the code and I'll look it up in Google but it is uh, quite handy to have that uh, straight in the unit there so let's go up to diagnose which is the main purpose of having the unit and then what we'll do is it goes through all of the different protocols and it scans which one the car uses and uh, then connects to the ECU via that. And the Toyota is ISO 9141. So there will be some readiness is not completed here because I haven't driven the car today. So things like the emissions won't be in a readiness state because it's not got up to temperature or in actual fact been used today but if it was then it would sh show that uh, the readiness not completed um, uh, wouldn't have that readiness not completed that would be zero so let's press ok and go on to the next stage so uh, I'm I don't think I've got any codes in I've got not got the um, 
engine management light up but let's go into there and have a look yep yeah, the vehicle has no fault code so that's good let's go back out uh, i don't need to erase codes but if you did you would go into there and it would say you know asks you are you sure you want to clear the codes and you would say okay now a top tip here uh, if you know if you've got an engine management light on uh, and you don't know what the code is, don't necessarily just clear the code and make the management light go out for two reasons. One, you need the code to understand what's wrong with the vehicle. And if you're not planning on fixing it yourself, what it does do is when you ring up your mechanic or garage that you use, you're then able to give them that code, which gives them a very good idea, along with the symptoms that you can tell them about gives them a very good idea as to what would be wrong with the car if you just have a discussion with them. But the other thing is, is that sometimes if a sensor stops working correctly, what some ECUs do is they use the last known good value or an average value for that sensor. And a good example of that are crankcase position sensors. Now, uh, on my son's Vauxhall Corsa, he had that Volt fault it was cleared before the salt sensor was repaired and the car ran before then no problem but the engine management light was up and as soon as that was cleared in the ECU that fault code was removed it removed the data associated with that and as a result of that the car then wouldn't start at all it just turned over but it wouldn't actually start until that sensor was changed so just you know don't go in there and just clear codes if the engine management lights come up unless you've repaired it and always remember if you've replaced or repaired the fault then go into uh, the management system and clear the code so the engine knows that it's been repaired and uh, it resets so yeah so don't just clear codes uh, on a whim so enough about that let's go out of a rage code so i am on a step readiness let's have a look into here we won't do this drive cycle so everything's reading okay, and no problems. And I know, and there isn't any problems uh, with the car, so I'm not expecting to see anything in here. Let's come out of here. So data stream. Um, let's go in here. Now um, on the data stream, what that gives you is live data when the car's running and the engine's running. You obviously don't want to be driving and looking at this as you're going along because that would be pretty dangerous. But what the data stream does do is it captures data as you're driving, which you can then download to your computer via the USB cable that uh, was provided with the unit. So if we go into view all items, it's having a look to see what data streams are available. And that's going to be things like uh, RPM and uh, that kind of thing. We can have a look at these. See, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the car and we'll see some of these in real time. Okay, so there we go. So we've got the tight car started, and then we've got uh, engine rev and the timing and the air intake temperature. And if we go on to the next, you've got airflow rate and throttle position. So it can give you more diagnostic data to see what's going on with the engine, and this is also uh, good indicators of things are are things working with intolerance. Because if you've got a fault with a fault code and then you go into this data stream section and the manufacturers will tell you what it should be. So where we've got at the top there, oxygen sensor output voltage, that will be between a minimum and a maximum tolerance. And if it's outside of that, well then we know that there's a problem. So if it's too high or too low, you know that there's definitely a problem going on there. And that will be coupled with uh, an engine management light. So that is the data stream section, that can be very useful. And then let's have a look, and this will give you a graph version. So let's choose those again if we just want to look at those. So let's choose coolant. And uh, we'll choose RPM as well, and there we go. And then there we are, and it's giving us the uh, two values. So the 34 is the engine temperature, and that's shown by the red, and that's in the bottom left there. And then the RPM is the orange, and that's uh, giving us uh, the RPMs, which is 1,289 revs 
uh, at the moment as the engine's uh, warming up and you can see there where the revs are coming down as the engine's warming up and the engine management system is uh, compensating for the engine warming up. So once again another good uh, tool that you can use for diagnosing issues uh, with your engine and this data can also be downloaded via the USB cable onto your computer uh, for you to review after after you've uh, been in the car and, and downloaded this stuff so let's come out of there so freeze frame data is a, is a snapshot in time O2 sensor test now I'm not sure if the car's been uh, run long enough so but we'll have a look and see um, what we've got so this car has actually got three sensors the MR2 Bank 1, sensor 1 and 2 are the sensors that are on the pre-catalytic converters which are on the manifold and bank 2, sensor 1 is the one that's after the main catalytic converter so let's go into that and have a look so it's testing that and it's passed And once it's taken live data there that we can see and it's passed. Uh, and in the, on the MR2, one of the things that will bring up the engine management light is uh, O2 sensors. Um, you'll quite often hear some people who own these MR2s call the engine management light the O2 sensor failure light because nine times out of ten in these cars that's what's causing the problem. Sorry about that, that was one of my neighbours saying hello to another neighbour. So then we've got the onboard monitoring. So that's a pass there. So these are the data modes that we were talking about earlier on in the help section. And this, this unit, I've um, reviewed another unit previously which uh, was the OM126. Um, this unit gives more I think more information and goes in depth more than, than that unit actually does. So that's all the diagnostic menu and let's, so let's come out of there. And again, are we sure we want to exit? Yes please. So back to the beginning. Okay, let's turn the engine off. Okay, there we go. So what do I think of this unit? I'm, I quite like this unit. When it turned up, I thought it might be a bit big uh, and chunky uh, compared to the smaller ones that I've used. But I've actually grown to quite like that. Um, I really like the feel of the buttons here. Um, I haven't talked about these buttons along the top here. These are um, quick access buttons. So rather than going through the menu options, you'd press diagnostic trouble codes and it will go straight in it's not going to now because I've turned the ignition off this is the uh, emission related diagnostic reset button here uh, this is your monitoring button and this is help um, so these are sort of quick keys which are quite useful rather than going through the menu options again I don't need to clear any of that because I haven't got any data in there so would I buy the launch 5001 uh, yes I would and I'll tell you for why because I like the unit it's a solid unit it would have been nice if the sides were uh, rubberized this is a common thing that you tend to find on these It'd be nice if it came with sort of a rubber surround or perhaps case for it to go in because if your hands are oily and you're doing this there is the possibility of it slipping out it's not a big deal You've got quite a reasonable amount of cable there. It's not possibly going to be enough to take it round and into the engine bay. You'd probably just get it round there via the via an open window, but nine times out of ten you're going to be doing this inside the cabin of the car. So a nice unit. It's got a lot of information built within to it. Uh, you've got code lookups, got information on what the system is and what each mode is. So very nice, neat little unit. There'll be a link in the description um, if you want to purchase one of these. So uh, that's it really. That is the Sea Reader 5001. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, a video soon on uh, using readers and 
what OBD2 is in a more simple terms for beginners. So if you're watching this video and you think, well, that's very nice, but I don't know half of what you've just spoken about, then consider subscribing because I'm going to be doing a video soon that talks about what it is, how it works, and it's nowhere near as scary as some people would make you believe, and it's a really useful tool to be able to repair your own vehicle. So thanks for watching. Um, hit the subscribe button if you found this video useful and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.